click the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to never miss another update. Ibn al-Bayta excelled in botany and herbology in Andalusia, his homeland, in spite of his young age, he surpassed all the scientists there, he even surpassed his own tutor. And this is why he decided to start a long journey. So, he traveled to Morocco, the closest country to Andalusia, to learn more secrets of botany. Welcome, O oh Ibn al Bader among us. Thank you, O oh Ibrahim, and thanks for your warm welcome. This is the least thing that a scientist like you deserves. Don't exaggerate. Your reputation as a botanist precedes you. So is your humility and good morals. Alhamdulillah. I hope that I'm worthy of this compliment. Let us not waste time in compliments. I want to learn what I couldn't learn in Andalusia, may you kindly help me? I'll definitely be honored to do so, and this is why I've brought you here. Do you see this tree? Its sight grabbed my attention, and I was going to ask you about it. Isn't this an argan tree? So you do know it? I only read about it, and about its characteristics and benefits. But I want you to talk to me about it elaborately as if I know nothing about it. Don't leave out any information that you know, you need to tell me everything about it. Well, argan tree grows only in Morocco, and a tree can live to reach the age of 150 years, and a multi-purpose oil is extracted from it. For example, it helps children to grow, and this is why we add it to food here. I also know that women use it in cosmetics and beauty products, is this true? Masha Allah, you know a lot about this tree, Ibn al Bader. Although you haven't seen it before. But I've seen it now, an eyewitness is better than hearsay, brother. That's true. Allow me to continue. Ibn al Bayta was striving for knowledge, and this is why he didn't settle for visiting Morocco. He set off from it to Algeria. This tree is called here thorn tree. Sometimes it is called shitta tree. This is what my tutor, Abu al Abbas, told me. Tell me about the properties and benefits of this tree. There is a use for each part of this tree. The dry trunk of the tree is used in cooking and heating in winter. It has a fragrance and it smells good. As for the leaves, goats and camels eat them. And it is a medicine for stomach. The leaves are teared out, the green leaves are then chewed and swallowed. What about the thorns? Thorns are good for camels when they get tumors inside of the mouth, which make them unable to eat nor drink. When they eat thorns of shitta trees, this helps them by curing these tumors and healing the camels. I know that there is a type of gums extracted from this tree. What is it used for? Acacia gum are used in the treatment of cough or oral infections, we dissolve it in water, while some put it in their mouth until it dissolves. Every day my amazement of nature increases, and my faith in Allah, exalted be he increases, he who created all of this diversity. From Algeria, Ibn al Bayta set off to Tunisia. Alright, let me revise with you, in Tunisia, Thyme oil is used in treating numerous diseases like arthritis, nosebleed and chronic headache. True. You also use artemisia oil for the treatment of cough and stomach disturbance, while wreath is used for loss of consciousness and amnesia. You told me the use of this plant, whose name is geranium, and I remember that you told me it is used in decorating gardens, and it is added to food, isn't it right? Yes, but it is also useful in alleviating throat pain, when the patient gargles with an emulsion of its leaves, and its oil has a fragrance and it is a tranquilizer. Its leaves can be used to prepare a syrup that cures the stomach. This is valuable information, thank you. You're welcome, scientist. The first part of al Baytar's journey by his arrival in Egypt, where he settled and he achieved great fame, as a botanist who is difficult to find someone like him. 
His Majesty, King Al Kamel, is expecting you. Hello, our great scientist, Ibn al Baytar. Hello, Your Majesty, Al Kamel. It is an honor for the Ayyubid royal court to welcome you. Would you grant me another honor, Ibn al Baytar? I won't withhold something that I can grant, Your Majesty. How tactful your replies are, and how modest you are, Ibn al Baytar. Well, I hope that you stay with us for a while in Egypt, during which you may continue your researches and studies, and at the same time you'll occupy a position that we think that no one else is worthy of other than you. Which position? The chief of the herbalists and botanists. But, there must be seniors, who know the herbs and the plants of Egypt better than me to occupy this position, your majesty, if I didn't fear the envy of the envies and the slander of the slanderers. I would have arranged a debate here between you and the greatest botanists, and I would have enjoyed seeing you outperforming them. I've heard a lot about you and I asked others to know more about you, and I'm certain that you are the best one for this position. Your new position will allow you to deal with everyone who knows medicine and interested in botany like you. This will guarantee that the level of the botanists in Egypt will rise thanks to your presence among them. What's your reply? How can I refuse such a great opportunity like this, your majesty? So, you'll start performing your job tasks from this moment. Ibn al Baytar spent much time in Egypt, wandering, studying, analyzing and experimenting, he writes down his notes and writings, and he kept his position which was assigned to him by King al Adel, even after his son, as Salah Najmu ad Din, succeeded him, but all of this didn't fulfill the ambition of our great scientist. Your Majesty, King, as Salah Najm ad Din, this is a special request and a wish that I hope that you will grant. Why do you want to leave Egypt, Ibn al Baytar? Are you bored from staying with us? On the contrary, Your Majesty. My residency in Egypt has given me the opportunity to learn more about botany, and neither you nor your father spared no effort to help me. Why do you want to travel to the Levant then? My specialization is very complex, I may know much information through reading and erudition, but I must examine the plants in the natural environment to make check the validity of the information, and make different experiments on them. Unfortunately, there isn't a single place on earth where all plants coexist. A scientist must travel everywhere he can reach, to learn more and more. Hmm. I can issue an order to bring the plants that you want here. The experiments won't be as accurate as when I examine them in their natural habitat. It is the trusteeship of knowledge, your majesty, so that I can get reliable results. As you can see, Ibn al Baytar, we were happy about your stay here. You've enriched our knowledge and benefited us. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support, your majesty, and for your concern about science and scientists. Ibn, Ibn al Baytar set, set off to continue the second part of his journey, and he headed to the Levant, to continue his studies and researches about plants, and about the effect of formulations extracted from them, Ibn al Baytar spent a period in Damascus, where he studied. We use cinnamon oil and vinegar as an ointment for the treatment of ulcers and blisters, and taught. Basil is one of the plants used in compounding perfumes, we may add it to food or use it in the treatment of insects bites, but it is contraindicated for pregnant women and young children under the age of two. Then, then he, he decided, decided to leave to Damascus, Damascus and continue, continue his journey. journey. Where are you heading now, sir? I'm heading to Anatolia, as there is a rich environment and a great botanical diversity, I must examine it and make experiments on it. You are such a knowledge lover. I have never seen in my life anyone who endures such hardship for the sake of knowledge. You reminded me of a conversation that I had with one of my friends in my childhood. I told him that I enjoy observing plants just like he enjoys playing. I'm a knowledge lover and I aspire to seek as much knowledge as I can. Good luck, sir.
another trip of Ibn al-Bitar started to new horizons of science.